Hello and welcome. I'm Sam Califer, your host for Vision, the show where we talk all about the College of Arts and Sciences, as well as its faculty, staff, and students. Today, I'm joined by Sarah Frederick, the Development Director of Development for the College of Arts and Sciences. Thank you so much for being here. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. And I'll add, that is a mouthful. It took me, this is my seventh year, but that first year I was like, how do I say this? So I just started saying it really quick. Yes. So I'm the Director of Development for the College of Arts and Sciences. Sure, yes, and I'm happy to have you on and hear about all the great work you do. But first I was hoping you could just introduce yourself, talk yeah. about your professional experience and how you came to Mississippi State. Well, I am a three-time graduate from Mississippi State. So obviously I believe Maroon and White. So happy Maroon Friday, of course. That's I need right. to put that out there. And I uh, actually started working at the age of 11. Mm. So I've been in the public sector for a while. My grandparents had a restaurant in downtown Aberdeen. So I always knew that I wanted to be somewhere where I'm working with people and helping people get where they need to be. And so starting at 11, kept working my way up through high school. I graduated from Amory High School in 2004. I was blessed to get a scholarship to play soccer at Meridian Community College oh, wow. for two years. So I played there while I worked on my broadcasting associate's degree. Mm. Graduated Phi Theta Kappa and transferred to Mississippi State. Got my undergraduate here in communication in 2008. And as many know, that's when the market crashed. So yes. the only people saying yes were graduate schools. So I stuck around and I got my MBA and I also got a master's in sports administration wow. because development was always something I was interested in and something I really wanted to pursue. And I really thought with me playing soccer and having that experience, athletics would be an area that I'd want to, you know, check out and raise money for. and especially here at Mississippi State because sure. the needs are endless. And when I, I, so I switched over and I interned at Learfield kind of towards the end of my academic career. And it, it was still kind of hard. The job market was hard with the banks and with the market crashing and such. So that didn't pan out. And I ended up going to Blue Cross and Blue Shield. Mm. When they called me, I said, oh, no, healthcare was never on the forefront or ever in my mind. Right. Why would I go to healthcare? And they said, just come, just come. And I'm a curious pe person and I'm open minded. So I said, all right, I'll go. Mm -hmm. But before I left, I met with my boss at the time, Jack McCarty and the foundation and interviewed for a job that didn't work out. But he said, let's stay in touch. And that's when I learned how important relationships truly are. Sure, yeah, and uh, you know, you have a lot of experience and happy to hear that you bleed maroon and white and you know, it always takes a while, but it sounds like you finally ended back up here in a career that you love. And from what I know about you, I, I, it is such a good career. You've got those people skills. And so I'm glad that you get to utilize those for the university. And so, yes, you're the director of development. You do development work and alumni relations work. So give me a glimpse of what the day-to-day -day might look like for a development officer. And that's always a funny question because it's different. I respect people that go in every day and they have their task list and they you know, go through that list and leave for the day and that's done. That's not me. Mm. I was never wired that way. I like to have different things pop up. I like issue resolution. I like to help people in different avenues and different fields and just try to help people get to where they want to be. And this job has really allowed me to do that. So a day to day, so this week, for example, mm -hmm. started off with usual meetings and such, but then I went to our graduate student award ceremony. Mm. So I got to sit there and look at these incredible masters and PhD students getting these amazing awards and their research topics are amazing. Mm. I mean, there's not a day that goes by that I'm not impressed by every single student that walks through the College of Arts and Sciences and this university as a whole. Sure. So 
that. And then I traveled. I went to Jackson. I was in Oxford. We do have some Mississippi State folks in Oxford mm -hmm. and uh, visited with some of them. And then we had a chemistry tour of the baseball facility because the game, unfortunately, was canceled on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And that was really cool because so there's eight colleges that make up the university. So I have colleagues that are development officers and all of those. Sure. And as well as athletics. So one of my athletics development officers was kind enough to give us a private tour. And I think that was even better. Sure. Yeah. So the back uh, behind the scenes yes. look at it. And so, yeah, you're, you know, um, you're plugged into a lot of different parts of the university. You know, you're trying to meet people and uh, develop those relationships, you know, and secure supplements and gifts for the college. Um, and so, but I think what people don't realize is what happens after those gifts, you know, get secured. So could you tell me about one that you maybe have recently closed and then talk about where does that money go and how does it get spent? Well, I'll explain just the different opportunities of giving. When I first started back in 2016, I was trying to learn all the terminology and all the different ways that you could give back to the university. And then I finally learned, you know, it doesn't matter what age you are, it doesn't matter what major you are and what career you're in, I want to meet you where you are. Mm. And so I started working with people and say, would you like to give your time? Mm. Like if you want students to shadow you, they need experience, or would you be a mentor for a student because they walked the same halls and sat in the same desk that you did. They want to be you. Sure. And they get excited about that. And they're like, sure, because they say, Sarah, I'm just financially, I cannot support at that level. Mm -hmm. And I understand that because I said the time that you pour back into them is priceless. And That's I've right. seen that and it's, it's been a beautiful process. But there's different ways. We have annual scholarships. So there's scholarships that the money put in that we award out is gone unless you add it back in or endowed scholarships. Those are scholarships that are, we have a minimum endowment at 25,000, mm. which is invested. And the money that is earned off of that each year is what we use to award scholarship with. Sure. So it's in perpetuity mm. and it's, it'll be here forever. Oh, wow. So that's, a, that's a way to carry on a legacy. And I've, Sadly, with COVID and such, we've lost a lot of good alumni, mm. friends of the university and the college, and uh, their family members found that fitting to carry on their legacy through that way. And we have a scholarship ceremony within the college where these alumni and donors or the family of them get to meet their students. So the person that they supported to get into college because without that support, some of them would have never been able to walk through the doors sure. here. Yeah, I love that. I mean, it's not just about the financial aspect, but it's, you know, the relationships that develop, the way it can, you know, change the trajectory of someone's life. And so that's kind of, you know, you're the one doing the behind the scenes work to make that work, make the connections for people. Um, that's so great. It, it, it really is. And honestly, it's not my, I'm, I play a small role in it in my mind because it's those donors that take the time to vision something that they want to give back to. Maybe they had a scholarship when they were a student or maybe they didn't or, and that's their experience was changed by that. So they want their, these students right now to have a better experience. So I just try to meet everybody where they are so we can write out a good scholarship or support fund that is gonna meet what they're thinking and to help students thrive when sure. they graduate. I think we were talking earlier, I mean, that's the goal, right? Yes. We wanna get them here. We wanna make sure that, that they're taking a part of every opportunity. Mm -hmm. And that also includes value added experiences. Sure. So that's outside of scholarships. So when they get a scholarship, they're in the classroom getting that knowledge. Now we've started new fund, our student first fund, right. that allows students to apply if they're doing research, internships, 
and things like that in the summer and the spring and take what they've learned in the classroom and apply it in the field. And the stories that we've received back from that have been incredible and has built their portfolio if they're wanting to go to graduate school or a professional school. I mean, we have gotten a lot of good feedback and success rate from that. Sure, yeah, they have all these great ideas, but they just need the resources to make it happen. And that's where you and your team can come in and evaluate these applications and give you know, that funding out. Could you tell me about, you know, maybe what are some one or two interesting projects you've been able to fund through that program? Well, so we just awarded this year's funding. So I'll hold off on that until maybe next time. Last year, we actually were able to support a music major who she was an opera singer and she went oh. to Italy. Oh. And I was like, okay, she just, she, she had amazing talent as it was, but she wanted to learn how they did it over there as well. She wanted to broaden, broaden her knowledge sure. of opera and the different ways that she could you know, perform. Yeah. And we invited her to our Dean's Advisory Board meeting in the fall. Mm. And I didn't mean to put her on the spot, but she was happy to do it. Sure. I said, do you mind you know, showing us your your talent mm -hmm. and man i wish i had the video it, it was amazing because i was i was recording her and her voice mm. was um, amazing something i'll never forget and then i panned around the room mm. and looking at you know these very successful business men and women and everybody and everybody was just i think everybody's mouth was open like Wow. Wow. And then I remember panning over to somebody else and they're like, oh my God. Sure. And I was like, I know. And it's because of you. You made that happen. Right. And that's the return on investment. Great. Well, thank you so much. And mm -hmm. thank you all for tuning in to this episode of Vision. We'll see you next time.